So I'll give the summary of the first one here. It's the K-12 Cybersecurity Act signed into law. Uh, essentially, there's going to be four main objectives, and this was a Biden administration. Uh, this was introduced by the U.S. representative out of Rhode Island, James Langevin, something like that. Essentially, he... Uh, I'll let you do these. <laughs> <laughs> I will mess up the names. So, uh, CISA, the Cybersecurity and Infrastructure Security Agency, has been uh, uh, tasked to conduct a cybersecurity risk uh, for schools K through 12, and they've got 120 days to act. And there's essentially four things that they're going to do. Uh, just designing a study for this, they're going to present their findings to Congress, uh, with the second objective being to get some guidelines that the schools can follow uh, to mitigate digital risks. CISA will use the surveys, uh, I guess this kind of looks to be the, their main thing, according to this article, to, to develop some guidelines for online school training uh, toolkits that the schools can implement for better security. Once they do that, they're going to have all the recommendations, they're going to build the toolkit and then make these things publicly available through the CISA website. And if you weren't familiar, just a little DV, uh, caveat, there's a lot of toolkits on uh, CISA's website right now, uh, I know definitely some small business ones, because the schools are, as this, as this article indicates, they're still subjective to a lot of the same risks and threats that you know the businesses and the governments are with malware incidents and ransomware attacks. Uh, one of the big things that this article points out is the lack of cyber awareness and training, particularly at the teacher and administrator levels, your principals, your assistant principals. Um, and now that, you know, between COVID the last couple of years, it's, it's just got worse because the schools had to pivot very fast to an online environment or some version of an online environment uh, to, it, that's just really did, you know, a threat exposure just really increased, the threat landscape really increased for them. So this is something new that's done and they're going to try to get this study completed. It looks like in the next four months, I can go on a rant for this forever because my wife is an assistant principal and has been a teacher before that. I have intimate knowledge having assisted and helped her with tech related items and have seen this stuff up close and personal also with the community. But I'm going to shut up and let you give your thoughts on this before I go on a freaking tear. I like this one. Um, so, so there's a lot of stuff that we can unpack on this one. And first and foremost is the fact of, I agree. I, I like the fact that they're bringing awareness that, hey, there's an issue that, that schools need to be doing a better job of protecting data. Because if you think about it, you know, from a, a cyber criminal's perspective, schools have all of the sensitive information for all of our kids out there. You know, so, you know, you see uh, commercials about LifeLock telling people, hey, you know, monitor your kids' social security numbers because those things can be stolen. Well, where can, where's the easiest place to get all that stuff? School. A school has it all. It has, it has all of your per, all your kids' personal information. It has their medical history. It has everything in there. And so when you talk about identity theft and being able to protect that, or at least having a treasure trove of information easily at your fingertips, schools are, 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 are big targets. And so I appreciate the fact that they're bringing awareness to it. Now, here's where I disagree or where I, I differ from where they're at is that the federal government leading the charge on this, I don't know how that's going to work. I mean, I, I really, really don't. Um, one, does the CISA have the manpower to actually pull this thing off? I mean, let, let's be real here. I mean, with, I mean, you and I have done work in the DOD space, and we we know everything that's going on with the changes with CMMC and and the security requirements there. You know, so how are they going to tack this on top of an already stressed out infrastructure and already thin? Like, I, I just don't think they have the resources to pull it. But uh, you know, I think it's great if they that they're bringing aware. Uh, but then once again, where where does the onus fall to actually implement this stuff? Great that you understand we've got issues, but where, how do they go about fixing it? Because I don't know about you. Well, and, and actually, I do know. I know that you've got a lot of experience with this. And so I'm, I'm curious to hear your take. But most school districts don't have the people like they don't have qualified people, qualified IT people. And big enough IT teams, let alone cybersecurity, because that's a completely different skill set. And I think I think we need to make sure that that as executives that you guys understand that just because you've got an IT person doesn't mean that you've got a security person, because it's it's a completely different skill set. And there's different skill sets in the cybersecurity realm. You've got those that are really good at network security versus database and and application security. I mean, those are completely different things. But I, I digress. 
when it comes back to this, I, I, I think, once again, I think the article does a great job of, of creating the awareness. I think the federal governments, their intentions are in the right place, but I don't see the execution and the follow through. I don't see it happening. No, and, and I, like you, I agree. I, I think everywhere across the board that there needs to be much more, uh, it, it takes the community to build a good cybersecurity program and everything is tied together. So like you said, the data that the school has, I don't know what else the school system's records may be tied into. You got your, you know, your local level, do they tie back into the state systems for reporting purposes when they talk about standardized testing? But what I have seen firsthand they can't get IT right. They can't get technology right. And this is firsthand experience. You want to talk about rogue IT, you know, for those that are not sure about the term shadow IT or rogue IT, that would be where unapproved devices kind of enter the network because somebody just kind of does their own stuff. Well, I may or may not have been guilty of providing my wife some rogue IT because she didn't have it. Okay. Obviously, I was guilty. But you were the perpetrator of the things that we hate the most. Yes. So <laughs> he could, she, she couldn't print. I was giving her printers to take in, like old equipment that I had to tie in because she, she was having to print off like 100-page documents on an inkjet printer, and they had a laser printer that was tied into the system. That that, that's priceless. That is absolutely priceless. But I the, did not know that. Yeah. That was a long time ago. That was not recent for anybody listening. I, <laughs> uh, but the schools are predicated on a lot of free equipment, and Google is a primary driver of that stuff. The 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 two school systems I'm intimately familiar with, um, having seen their stuff up close and personal, they are highly reliant on Chromebooks, which they either get reduced or free from Google, which is great. I'm glad Google does that, as well as the Google Classroom on, on that stuff. So a lot of the security from how they utilize Google Classroom that needs to be baked into there. But on top of that, you've already, you, you hit some of those points. You've got the school systems in most local communities, whether you do this or not, are one of the biggest employers in most local communities. Think about it. I want you to think about how many elementary schools, how many middle schools, and how many high schools are there, and how much staff it takes to run those. Uh, my wife is an, as an assistant principal. They have a staff of 100. Now times that across. Uh, now times that across. You know how many of the schools are in the in the current system. When we were in another community, the entire school department had four IT people. Four. That was it. And so you're telling me, let's throw this extra requirement, and it yes needed, but schools are funded locally. Right. So where where's the makeup going to be with this? And then to make this matters worse the okay D diving off slightly the reg regulation a lot of people sit there oh we need to cut red tape for regulation you need to have rules to the game so it, it needs to be very spotted which specifically which regulations need to be removed when we're talking about a business environment i kid you not the amount of regulation that it takes to teach a a five-year-old to read and do basic math is ridiculous when it comes to the amount of continuing education that a teacher is required to go through for a lot of times it's the same stuff year in and year out for for things that to me it, it's overly educated underpaid and I, I don't think too many people would, would disagree with that so now we're going to throw in hey now let's go do yes you need to do cyber training now we're going to make it you know coming out with some heavy-handed approach to this stuff okay absolutely throw cyber training to teachers and awareness because now they're taking doing work from home they're taking kids records probably home with them yes. physical records <laughs> on top of that stuff so now you've got physical security on top of digital security but what are you going to take away to make their lives easier from the this the dumb stuff that i've seen up close and personal why do you got to do that i ask my wife all the time why do you got to go through that again you do this stuff day in and day out. That's not continuing, Ed. That's not advancing your skill. They're ramming down crap down your throat that you're already familiar with. So if we're going to start throwing stuff down with them, which is needed, we need to protect the stuff. I, I don't disagree. Um, can't, you know, whether CISA has the resources to pull this off, but at the, at the local level where this needs to be executed with, it's going to be looked at as, oh my God, we've got another thing. Uh, and I think, you know, for me, the biggest thing that I, I, I don't want to see happen is that 
<clears throat> that the federal government get involved with it and they, they create these mandates, you know, because we've, we've already seen it in the, in the DOD spot and, you know, DOD, you know, rolled out CMMC, said everybody's got to get audited, this, that, and the other. And there was instant pushback from the industrial base that says, wait a minute, how are we going to do this? Who's going to pay for all of this? And so I see the exact same thing coming from schools in that, how are we supposed to do this? We don't have the, we don't have the knowledge. We don't have the resources from an IT infrastructure, you know, hardware networking equipment. We don't, we don't have that. We don't have money for it. At the same time, we don't have the 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 intellectual resources and assets, the people, in order to to execute this thing and put it in place. And so, you know, to say to to I don't want it to become a regulation. I want it to become, hey, let's create some awareness. These are best practices. I mean, but we all, I mean, if, if you're in the security space, you know the best practices. I was like, this is this stuff isn't rocket science to to a degree. You know, the you know. A lot of it's the, the, having the right tools, having the right people that can do threat hunting and things of that nature, you know, but I, I just don't want to see it coming down to a regulation because smaller, smaller municipalities, they're going to, they're not going to be able to meet it. So then what happens? And then who's going to hold them accountable? Who's going to come back and check this stuff? I mean, like we didn't even talk about that. Who's going to audit and validate and verify that these things are actually being done? Because they couldn't do it with the DOD and the, and the def defense industrial base. So if you couldn't do it there, you're going to tackle schools now? Come on. That, that, that's my big thing. I, yeah. I think value and effort, they raise good points. Create awareness because we do need to protect our kids' information. Uh, schools are hot top or, or hot targets uh, because of the information that they carry. But, you know, how, how, how are you going to do it? How are you going to do it? Right. So I, I think, you know, right before we move on to the next topic, I think I think this is a thing to track. You know, I think this is something we'll revisit for sure once the report comes out to see what their recommendations are. So, well, yeah, um, because don't, aren't they supposed to have this thing out in the next like four months, 20 days? 120 days. This was signed at the end of December. <laughs> so, so let's see how, how many times this gets kicked down the road. <laughs> yeah, they can't even do an, an annual budget that's like part of their job or the congressional level, much less. But anyway, we digress. So, All right. so what's, what's the over under on 240 days? <laughs> <laughs> All right. So moving on to the 